just jump right into it. Tip number one, format your resume according to your industry. So I'm gonna actually share my screen and we're going to take a look at a sample resume with a really good accounting format. We have over here, John Snow, EA, CPA, pending their license issuance. So off the bat, you know, they're using a really good format, you know, probably size 10 to 12 font. I'm using Arial or Verdana. A really nice to look at, you know, we're structured between different parts. You have all their contact information. Um, we have the locations and the months and years work there, the different companies and the positions held three bullet points for, for each job. Also a leadership component with extracurricular activities. One thing that I did like that this candidate did do is they showed progression within a firm. And what this does is it shows the, the upward mobility and the difference in responsibilities, but it also, for someone that was just glancing at the resume, made it look like they were at the same company and not jumping around. I would definitely recommend doing that. And when it comes to formatting, you do want to stand out with your resume, but not from a format perspective. Tip number two, use action verbs to give personality to your resume. One of the really good resources that I used when I was creating my own resume, you know, I just typed in action verbs for resume and a bunch of these websites come up. I like the one where it's 400 plus resume action verbs, any of them work. But one of the reasons why I like this is a lot of people tend to use the same verbs. A lot of people say I led or I organized or I assisted with. And after reading through a bunch of those, it becomes monotonous. So instead of using the word led, you could use the word spearheaded, prep versus review. But really take this resource and kind of put your own spin on things. Tip number three, what section should be included in a resume and where should they appear? So I always like to have the top of the page, you know, showing your contact information. And I highly encourage that you put your certifications up on the top. Down below, sometimes people will have a certification and they'll put CPA and they'll do that on their LinkedIn as well. But recruiters only are spending, you know, maybe about a minute, uh, two minutes on each resume. So having everything pop up at the top, just make sure that it won't be missed if people are sifting through resumes. You know, this person actually put CPA pending license issuance, and that's totally fair to do. I mean, it actually lets me know that they've been proactive and they got in the hard part of the CPA exam done. Including on the format, you know, I usually like to stop, uh, start with the education on the top, and then the bulk of the resume will be the relevant experience, which jobs you're working with. And, you know, if you have a lot of experience and you know, maybe 20 years of experience, I would maybe put the most relevant that pertains to the job off. But towards the end, I mean, this was Canada Put Leadership Experience, which includes philanthropy and sports groups that they were in. People could put certification, softwares, whatever you think is relevant. Tip number four, don't be vague. And what I mean by don't be vague is sometimes people will put associate or accountant, um, you know, you, you won't see this as much on a resume as you will on LinkedIn, but definitely make sure that you're letting the reader know which industry or industries you're in. You know, if this person's international tax, are they more on the advisory side? Or are they more on the compliance side? Putting specific tax forms like the 5478, 1120F, you want to use the verbs in here to talk about what you're preparing versus what you're reviewing. Step number five is tailoring your resume to the job you're applying for. A lot of times people put what they're doing, which is really good. You want to be as straightforward as possible. But if you're looking to do something a little bit different, whether it's a different industry or a um, different job altogether, you should be tailoring the information to speak to the new position. So for instance, this person started out international tax. And the reason why this person put, you know, providing support with the salt practice and power of attorney, you know, some international tax teams deal with that, but it seems like this person is looking to be more on the domestic side and, and maybe with their next opportunity, they're looking um, to be inbound or completely state and local. So although this may not be the bulk of what they're doing, at least they're including it because this specific person was applying to a salt job. Tailoring your resume to the job that you're applying for is something that is very important, as long as you're not fabricating it. So hopefully these five tips will help you, whether you're creating or building on your existing resume. And feel free to comment below and follow our career page to talk about next week's edition. Thanks.